All right, we should be live now. Uh, we're waiting on everybody to join in here. If everybody could, um, while we're live, go ahead and share the live stream. Um, also, post a little comment in there just to let us know that you're here. Like I said, I don't I don't see everyone who uh, comes in as they come in. So um, if you could, just post a little comment so I can see who all uh, came in during the live stream. Uh, give me just a second. I am sharing the live stream to uh, my Facebook real quick. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about... Um, about forgiveness tonight we're going to talk a little bit about um, getting a little bit closer to Jesus um, and we will um, really just start getting into that I'm gonna give it just a couple couple minutes here I hope everyone's having a great Saturday I'm hoping everybody got everything they need to done uh, we've been doing yard work again all day today but our house is gonna look great so <laughs> that's all that matters um, we have been going since about seven o'clock this morning uh, and really just started um, sitting down around seven this afternoon so uh, hope everyone's had a pretty productive day uh, and I hope everyone is going to enjoy the live stream tonight uh, this is this will be part three of our series if you haven't watched the other two parts I highly recommend it uh, also you can catch them on the YouTube channel uh, if you want to catch up on them that way you can as well um, we're going to be talking about Philemon, Philemon, uh, we're going to call him Phil, uh, <laughs> because I don't like hard names, and uh, him and Onesimus, uh, I don't know how to shorten that one, but uh, those are who, who we're going to be talking about tonight, and uh, we're going to be talking about our grudges and everything that kind of holds us back from God, um, but before we get into it, I uh, spoke with, about, uh, spoke with it uh, with Ashley, She's right over there, if everybody doesn't know at this point. This is where she sits. Um, and I kind of want to convey an image before we really get started too deep into this. Uh, like I said, everybody, if, um, as you come in, go ahead and post a little comment in there, uh, just so we know who all is in here. Uh, comments are a great thing for me to read, so I can kind of see if y'all are enjoying the message and see if y'all are really grasping it. Um, Do a quick video. Like a quick music review. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're gonna wait for a couple minutes here. Uh, we're gonna play a little music, and uh, we'll get a little get a little worship going uh, before we get in here. So uh, we're gonna do that for a few minutes. Uh, if everybody would just go ahead and worship with us. Uh, we're gonna mute our mic so you won't hear us, uh, but uh, you will hear the music. So. Uh, we're just waiting for a few more minutes for everyone to come in, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Sorry for that brief pause. Uh, our dogs lost their minds as soon as I turned the music off. So, <laughs> uh, I think everybody's in now. We're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, for everyone who wasn't in earlier, we're going to be talking about forgiveness and grudges tonight. Uh, I hope everyone is enjoying uh, enjoying the message and all the messages we've done before. This is part three. Uh, you can catch parts one and two on the Facebook page. I've tried to pin them uh, so they're a little bit easier to find. And our dogs are just loving interrupting the live stream tonight. They want to know. They want you to know that they are here as well. Uh, they've come to listen to the word. Coco, get up or get out. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, I think Satan's trying to be distracting tonight, so maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that maybe it means it's going to be a good message. Um, so uh, I did talk a little bit. We've been going all day today, so we're a little tired. I do apologize. Uh, we've been doing yard work since about seven this morning until uh, about about seven o'clock tonight. So um, we're going to talk about uh, Philemon, or we're going to call him Phil. I hope everyone's okay with me calling him Phil. Uh, because I'm going to get tongue-tied if I have to call him Philemon all night. And uh, Onesimus. And that will be in the book of Philemon. Uh, before we get started, though, I want to do a quick, uh, quick prayer. Uh, if everybody will just you know pray with me. Uh, just really want to make sure the word's being received tonight. Um, that everything's going well with us. So um, I'm just going to pray real quick. Lord God, we just want to thank you tonight for allowing us to be here. And allowing us to join in and enjoy this service, God. Uh, and enjoy this message, God. 
We pray, God, that you'll prepare our hearts to receive it, Lord, and that we'll just be blessed by it, God. I pray, God, that you'll use me as your instrument, Lord, and just speak through me tonight, Father. Don't let any of the words be my own words, but let them only be your words, Father. May you bless us and keep us, God, in your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Um, so, to start out the lesson... I don't want to start reading just yet. Uh, Ashley and we talked about it, and she had a great idea of kind of giving an image. Because um, basically with these lessons, we've been talking about water. And sometimes we refer to water as, you know, drinking water or water or well. And sometimes as, as a river that flows. Uh, but tonight we're going to be talking a little bit like an ocean uh, for the image. And our message titles we have two uh, you can pick whichever one you like if you if you want to take notes or if you want to do anything there's two titles uh, there's pushing past the shallows and going deeper they mean the same thing but what we're, what we're talking about with the image of the ocean here is pushing past the shallows and going deeper kind of think of an ocean when you first get into the water and our water in this series is God it is the Holy Spirit it is Jesus Christ so when we, when we first become a Christian, we first get into the water. And we're kind of in the shallow end, but that's okay. We just got there. But we, we want to talk about moving further into the water. Because a lot of us, uh, if you go to the beach, maybe you're one of those people that gets comfortable in the water. You know, you get like ankle deep, maybe knee deep. You know, kind of where you can keep walking. You know, you don't want to you don't want to go too far where you actually have to swim, but your feet can still touch the bottom, so you still feel like you're in control. Um... And then we have those people who like to fight the waves, which I love to do. And they go, like, deep. <laughs> and they go, like, to the point that they have to swim because they feel like they have to fight the waves. And while that is very thrilling in our lives when we get that deep with God, when we keep getting deeper with God and we keep growing with God, it's also harder. Because when we're walking and our feet are touching the ground, the waves don't seem quite as much. Because we're still in control. We still have our grounding. We can still move our feet and we can still have that steady foundation but when you start getting a little bit deeper in the water you have to start swing, swimming you have to put more effort in and the waves get higher they don't get smaller the deeper you go and the water keeps changing and the wind may blow faster and it's it's constantly throwing you under but it's worth it it's worth it when we're talking about God it's worth it to get deeper and to get into the harder stuff it's what we desire to do. And tonight I want to talk about how we get deeper, how we keep going deeper, and how we don't remain in the same place or in the shallow end. Um, and so we're going to talk about grudges. We're going to talk about forgiveness. We're going to talk about everything that can keep us from God. And when we talk about these things, I want everyone to imagine an anchor, okay? The anchor is placed on the shore. This is all Ashley's idea. By the way, credit to her because she will yell at me if I don't give her credit. She's saying no, she won't. She'll mention it. She'll mention it, I promise. But <laughs> think, of, think of these things, this grudge, the unforgiveness, the sin, the hatred, whatever it is that is keeping you from going deeper as an anchor placed on the sand, placed on the shore, okay? And it keeps you from going deeper. You can't move forward because the anchor is holding you where you're at. You may, you're still in the water. You can still be doing great things, but you, you're still stuck where you're at. So... Um, we're going to talk about uh, Philemon, and I have to kind of give some history beforehand. We're going to be reading, it's only one, it's, it's one of those books that only has one chapter, uh, but we're going to read verses 4 through 16. Ashley will post that in the chat if anybody needs a Bible verses for your Bible app on your phone. Um, but we're going to talk about Phil, that's all I'm going to call him, in Onesimus. And uh, it's a letter that Paul writes to Phil here. So Paul is writing the letter. I'm not going to start reading yet, but he's writing the letter to Phil kind of to accomplish a mission. And that's kind of what we talked about a little bit in the, the past few weeks about accomplishing a mission, that everyone has a mission. But Paul is writing this to Phil because he, he kind of has a way for Phil to get deeper. He, he has a way to break off that anchor for Phil. And Phil here is a great Christian. He is a great man of God. And then when we read that, that's what we're going to find out. Um, Ashley's still getting the verse ready. Four through sixteen. Four through sixteen. Fourteen, fourteen. No, four through sixteen. For some reason, I can't spell in this. Um, it keeps taking me to Peter. Read the first. 
No, Paul, a prisoner of Christ. Who's taking this? Like I type on Selena, and it's going into Peter for some reason. Okay. Ashley's still working on it. But, um, like I said, we're going to be talking about going past our grudges and everything that we're holding back from ourselves. I hope everyone is enjoying uh, the live stream. We're going to go ahead and start reading. Ashley's going to put the verses down in the uh, chat if you need them. In just a minute, she's having we're having some technical issues, but uh, we're going to read verses four through sixteen in the book of Philemon or Philemon, uh, but we're going to be calling him Phil. So everyone just I won't call him Phil if, if I haven't said that enough yet. Um, and so we've already kind of started the letter, but we're, we're going to really get into what Paul's trying to get across. He says, "I thank my God, uh, making mention of you always in my prayers, hearing of your love and and faith which which you have toward the Lord Jesus." and toward all the saints, that the sharing of your faith may become, effect, uh, may become effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. And I kind of want to stop right there. I know we only got uh, like two verses in, but I want to stop right there because Paul is praying that Phil's testimony will be greater. And he's going to kind of push on more greatness itself. Because that's kind of how we, we can lead people to God is by giving our testimony and what we've been through. We can't, we can't, really, we can't really relate to people that we haven't been, uh, you know, that we haven't uh, had the same story or we haven't been through the same things they've been through. Uh, so Paul is praying that the acknowledgement of every good thing in Phil's life will become more effective in the sharing of his faith. And he's going to kind of push that a little further because he's going to send a former slave that escaped and stole things from Philemon to him for forgiveness. Um, and sometimes we need this too. Everybody knows that you can't have a testimony without a test or a trial. And for us to grow and for us to get closer to God, we're, we're going to encounter those things. And that's completely normal. It's completely okay. And sometimes it's things from our past. It's, not, it's a testimony of maybe forgiveness that is something that happened way before you were a Christian. Or maybe right when you became a Christian of hurt and pain or anything like that that could have, could have been caused to you. Um, but moving past that is where the testimony comes in. It's not a testimony. A testimony is not about how you were hurt. The testimony is about how you recover and how you move past that. And I hope tonight that if you don't get anything out of this message, if you don't get anything out of it, remember this part, that the acknowledgement of every good thing in your life is how we lead people to God. Don't spend times on the bad, spend times on the good. All things work together for good. It doesn't matter if they're bad or if they're good. No matter what they are, they all work together for good. But the good things in our lives are how we can encourage people and how we can push past all the negativity in the world. So um, we're going to keep reading just a little bit. And uh, I want to pick up. We're in verse 7 now. It says, For we have great joy and consolation in your love, because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed by you, brother. Now, I, I want to stop right there again because I'm trying to... For us to understand the story we, and how it relates to us, we have to understand who, who Phil is. We have to understand how Paul describes him. And just by that verse, we can understand that Phil is a good Christian. He does everything right. He's, he's doing everything right. He's refreshing the saint's spirit. The, he's refreshing Paul. He's refreshing all these people that are the big names in leading the gospel in the time that he's in. And he's refreshing them just by his walk with God. Just by how much he loves God and how much he loves the church and everything that goes on with it. And just by that love, he refreshes their spirit. He brings that renewal of the water that we've talked about in the past couple weeks. Um, so he's not necessarily a bad Christian, but he's going to have a test to go through. And that's okay because we can still be good Christians. We can be great Christians even and still be in the shallow waters. It's not, it's not uncommon. For someone to be in the shallow waters but still be a blessing to other people. But if we want to go deeper and we want to get more in tune with God. We want to get closer to God. We have to get deeper. And we have to push past our limits and push past those things that are holding us back. We have to cut free of our anchor. Okay? So we're going to keep reading just a little bit more. 
and I know I'm talking a lot and I might be talking fast if I am tell me to slow down but I'm excited about it so uh, in verse 8 it says therefore though I might I might be very bold in Christ to command you what is fitting yet for love's sake I rather uh, sorry I have to flip the page I rather appeal to you being such a one as Paul the aged and now also a prisoner of Christ of Jesus Christ I appeal to you for my son Onesimus um, whom I have begotten while in my chains who once was unprofitable to you but now is pro is profitable to me to you and and to me I want to I want to stop right there <laughs> because He says he's unprofitable. He has been unprofitable to Philemon. He and to kind of give you a little bit of the story of what you can find on on Onesimus is he was a former slave of Philemon. He was he was someone who was in in slavery in the chains of Philemon, who escaped and may have even stolen some things from him. But he Paul writes about how this this man who would have who who've stolen things who who broke free and, and caused pain in Philemon's life is now profitable to Paul? And when I say profitable, I want, I want you to think of it like this. He is a blessing to Paul. He was a, a, a tool that caused hurt in the past. He caused bad things to happen. Bad things in Philemon's life happened. But to Paul, he's someone who has blessed him and refreshed his spirit. He is someone who has been there while Paul has been in these chains and while he has been held captive to keep his faith up and to keep him pushing closer to Jesus. So Onesimus is doing this for Paul. For Paul, the like one of the greatest apostles in the New Testament. And Onesimus, a former slave who has, caught, who has done bad things in his life to hurt people, is now a blessing to Paul. If you don't get where I'm going with this yet, it's okay. We're going to get there, but I'm really hoping you're getting it. Because people who cause you hurt can still be blessings to others. People who cause you previous pain can still bless other people ahead of you. Maybe even right after you. It doesn't matter. God uses people in many ways. And like I said before, keep this in your mind. God takes all things and uses them for good. God takes coronavirus and uses it for good. God takes death and uses it for good. God can take anything bad in your life and anything good in your life, any of the just normal day stuff in your life, and work it for good. There's a lot of bad things that happen, but everything works out for good. Everything. Onesimus may have left and he may have stolen and he may have done all of these awful things But guess what? It wasn't your blessing to have it still wasn't working out good for you But Paul got the good side of it. That's crazy, right? We would think that normally if someone caused us pain then the blessing would come to us Right after right God shouldn't take When, when someone does evil towards us We kind of want revenge a little bit that we should get blessed while they get nothing like they should be uh, cursed while we get even if we get nothing they should have even less than nothing while we get a blessing they should be the same that's how we think about things but the thing is Philemon didn't gain anything <laughs> he didn't gain anything he became a Christian later but he didn't gain anything when the when Onesimus left it wasn't his blessing to have. It wasn't his good thing to have, but it still worked out good for Paul. And we're going to read a little bit more about that as we get a little bit further into it. i got to remember where we had, we stopped at. Um, in, in verse 12, I am sending him back. Uh, you therefore receive him, that is my own heart, whom I wish to keep with me, that on your behalf he might minister to me in my chains for the gospel. But without your consent, I wanted to do nothing. That your good deed might not be, uh, might not be compulsion, as it were, but voluntary. For perhaps, for perhaps he departed for a while for this purpose, that you might receive him forever. And I want to stop right there, and kind of go back to what I was just saying before. Onesimus had to leave. He had to go where he needed to go. This bad thing had to happen in Philemon's life. You know, we, we wouldn't think about it today as you know slavery or whatever it is or 
or anything like that. But think about stealing. You know, think about someone who's stolen from you. It hurts. It 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 makes you a little angry. It makes you a little hurt. But Onesimus had to leave. It was necessary for this bad thing to happen. It was necessary for this thing to hurt and this thing a little bit. So, um. I just said I'm buffering for a second. Um, but I want I want to talk about necessity. And I'm, I might go off the deep end a little bit. And if, if you don't agree with me, I'm sorry. But this is, as as this these, these coronavirus has gone on, I've had to accept that while it sucks, it's necessary. And that just as much as the good things in our lives are great, the bad things in our life are still as necessary as the good things that are supposed to come. The raises and the new houses and the new cars and the promotions are just as, necess just as necessary. Sorry, I'm getting tongue-tied here. Just as necessary as the loss of a job, the loss of a house, the loss of a car, the losing of family, the losing of friends, the coronavirus. Just It's just as necessary as all the good things you need in your life. So... It may be hard to look at it like that, but everything works out for good. Everything turns out for good, even the bad things. It's not it's not just not just good things work out for good. It is all things that work out for good. And in order for God to bless us or our enemies or complete strangers or friends, we might have to get hurt. We might have to experience pain. We might have to to get something that is grudge worthy, if you want to call it. It's something that we feel like it's okay for me to hold a grudge because that was awful what they did to me. How I was treated. All these things were just awful. But it's still necessary in God's plan to bless others. And it may not even be to bless you. The loss of a job may not be... a because there's a better job around the corner, it might just be because of the people at the next job you're going to need you more than the people at your last job did. And that's that's the thing. It may not always look like a blessing to us. It may not always be a blessing to us. But that's kind of the point, right? Isn't that what a testimony is? To be tested, to be tried, and even if it doesn't bless you, to still count off even the little good things that God does for you every day even just a little bit because that's how our the our our faith can become stronger is just by acknowledging the little things yeah you woke up this morning yeah you had air to breathe yeah you, you got out there and you did yard work for like five hours or 12 hours or however many hours you got everything you need to on your checklist done for the day whatever your blessing is for the day Whatever that little good thing is, it's just as important as the new houses, the new cars, the things that come maybe once or twice in a lifetime that, that are really big blessings. Those aren't as important as the everyday blessings. Yeah, it's great to worship God when you get those. It's also great to worship God when you get the little ones and you get the little tiny things that we need each and every day. Maybe it's just providing food. Maybe it's just getting a paycheck so you can afford food. Or maybe it's the fact that you can't go outside right now. I don't know how coronavirus is going to work out. I don't know what it's doing. I don't know if it's really a blessing yet or not. But I feel like to some people it is and to some people it's not. But... We have a chance to grow and we have a chance to spend time. If you don't have time, if you're not working right now, you have all the time in the world to spend with God. If you're staying at home like I am right now, you have all the time in the world to spend with God. You can do, you, we can grow so much in this small amount of time from this awful thing that's happening in our world. And I feel like it's pushing the churches to grow too. But it had to happen. It had to be necessary. And when you think about it, there's a lot of things in the Bible that were necessary. When you think about Jacob, God, um, when you think about Jacob, God is, God blesses Jacob. And they t he tells his parents even beforehand that even though he was a second born child, he was going to be greater than the firstborn. But he didn't tell him how that was going to happen. He had to steal things from his brother to get it. 
And even after that, God still blessed them. If you're Esau, I would be a little upset because I got hurt and I didn't get blessed. In fact, the person who hurt me got way more blessed. But when you catch up later, Esau's doing just fine and so is Jacob. And that's the thing. It's necessary. Another good example, and I know this one might get people riled up a little bit, but Judas was just as necessary as every other character in the Bible. And I think we give him a little bit of a hard time for good reason. You know, he betrays Jesus. But didn't Jesus have to be betrayed? Didn't he have to get to the cross somehow? Didn't he have to get die for our sins in some way? We knew how it was going to happen. Jesus knew how it was going to happen. He knew who was going to betray him. And he knew when they were going to betray him. But he, he also knew that it was necessary for him to get where he needed to get. For him to bless the people he needed to bless. And for him to get the salvation that he needed to give out to everyone. It's that free gift that we all need. And it's just as necessary as all the little bad things or big bad things that happen in our life. It's just as necessary as all the good things that happen in our lives. And when we come to terms with that, we can start cutting that anchor off. We can start getting closer to God to know that, hey, even if it doesn't work out, I got faith to believe that something's going to work out. Even if it's not good right now, I got to know that good is coming someday. It's not, it may not come tomorrow. It may not come in the next few weeks. It may not come in the next few months. But someday, good is coming my way. Even if it's just an, a little good in my day. Even if it's just a, a little bit easy time on my job. Maybe I get a really good customer I have to deal with. Or maybe I get a, a, a just have a really good experience with, with people I have to deal with at work. Or maybe we're just laughing and joking and cutting up. Whatever it is. If you go to church and you enjoy the people you're at church with, that's a blessing because you're able to be there. Guess what? We have our Sunday car side service because we can't go inside the church. Guess what? It's still just as much the blessing as going inside the church. Whatever it is, remember the small things in our days so we can remember the blessings when the good days aren't coming our way. When the big goods aren't coming our way. And so that way we don't lose our faith and we can keep becoming more effective in our faith just by remembering every good thing that God has done for us. And I got, I got one more verse and I'm going to bring up a, another verse along the way. Um, I hope everybody's enjoying this message. And if I am, if I am stepping on any toes, I'm, I do apologize, but this is what I feel like God has given me. And it, I feel like it's, it's important for us to acknowledge the, the necessary evils in our lives. The necessary things that have to come by so that we can be blessings to others or so that others can be blessed. Um, and it, it's hard to think of it like that. It's hard to think of it like that when something comes our way. When something bad happens to us, it is really hard to understand how in the world anything good is going to come from it. And for Philemon, nothing good came of it. He didn't get anything. The only reason he even gets reunited with Onesimus is because of Paul because Onesimus was a blessing to Paul he was a blessing to someone that yeah Philemon knew but he did he didn't know that's where this was going to go he didn't know that Onesimus was going to get saved and be a and be just a blessing to Paul while he's in prison he can't get out there to do everything that he normally does I'm struggling here I'm running out of air um <laughs> but but that's but but that's what all of our things are. If we can all think of our, our necessary evils in our lives like that, and those necessary pains in our lives like that, that even if it doesn't bless me, God, I know you're going to use it to bless somebody. I don't know how. I don't know why. But something, someone's going to get blessed some way. Um, but I want to go ahead and read verse 16. And we'll, we'll, we'll kind of wrap things up here. It says, No longer as a slave... Um, he's talking about receiving uh, Onesimus if I have to pick that back up um, just so everybody's caught up he, he's talking to Philemon about receiving Onesimus and, and how we should receive him and he says no longer as a slave but more than a slave a beloved brother especially to me but how much more to you both in the flesh and in the spirit and, and in the Lord sorry and that's the last verse um, I am going to reference another verse ahead of that but we'll get to it in a minute and it's, it's, it's crazy, right? It's a tall order to ask Philemon that to no longer receive him as a slave, but to receive him as your brother, as your equivalent. That's what I think of when I think of brother. It's, it's someone who's equivalent to you. 
because they've both been saved by the same grace and they've both been covered by the same blood and their sins no longer hold them back. And they both received that same living water. But Onesimus should be less, right? He was less before. He was a slave to Philemon before. They can't be equals now. But that's how God works. He works in the fact that the people that you saw as lesser, the people that you saw that weren't as good as you, it's okay if you don't want to admit that out loud. But I think we've all done it before, that we've thought of people as less than us. Well, yeah, they're good, but they're not as good as I am. Maybe you didn't say it like that, but you maybe thought it. I think, let's be honest here, I think we've all done that at one point or another, to think that we're better than somebody. And, and that's kind of what Philemon would do. It would make complete sense, right? I used to own him, and now you're telling me to treat him as my equivalent? Treat him as treat him as equal to me, and to receive him as equal to me, and that doesn't make any sense. I I, I was way above him before, and we've both received the same thing. So shouldn't that mean that I'm still way above him now? Shouldn't that still mean that I'm greater than him now? If 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 I'm gonna put it in math. If you hate math, I'm sorry, but I'm a math guy. If if you take two numbers and you add the same number to it. The number that was greater before is still going to be greater after. And that's kind of what I would be thinking. You know, we, we both received God's grace, but I was higher than him before. I was I was greater than him before. You just talked about how I'm being a blessing to all the saints. But the thing is, he, he also said Onesimus is just as much as a blessing. He's just as great. He, In fact, he's blessing Paul every day. He's coming to the cell every day. He's giving him the good word. He's, he's, he's giving him the words that he needs to build his faith up in the time that it's weak. And he's being, he's, he, he, he may, you may even think that he's being greater than what Philemon's doing. Philemon's being great in his walk every day. But Onesimus is being there every day. He is physically there with Paul every single day while he's in prison. Um, but I want to tie in another verse a little bit farther ahead if no one, if, if everyone doesn't, doesn't mind but before I do I want to I want to stop talking in the literal um, and I want to talk figuratively and if everybody could just think of someone who's hurt you before uh, with just the pain that you hold I think we all have them I think we've all been through it uh, and you don't have to say it out loud I'm not going to say mine out loud if you know me you probably know what it is but we've all had pain, and we've all had people that hurt us, and we've all had things that held us back, and it's really caused the most pain from it. But we also have people who, who bless us each and every day. And if you just think about the people that hurt you, that want, maybe it's one person, maybe it's many people, maybe it's someone at work, maybe it's someone in your family, maybe it's some, a friend, maybe it's someone at church, whoever has hurt you. I want you to think about right now even if you're still holding on to it maybe it can be a past pain maybe it can be a present pain but whoever it is I want you to think about that right now and I want I want you to think about forgiving that person and not just forgiving them in the physical aspect and when I say physical aspect what I mean is is how you forgive somebody but you still bring up the past and you don't really let it go you can, you can give somebody partial forgiveness. It's completely possible. You can give somebody a partial, I accept your apology. Or, 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 you know, I'm forgiving you. You can give somebody a partial of that. But you can also, when you give somebody a partial, you're still going to hold that past against them. And God doesn't do that for us. And we, we shouldn't do that for others. And it's really easy to say that. It's a lot harder to do. And so... We, I want you to think about that person. I want you to think about forgiving them to the point they were before. Maybe they were your friend. Maybe they were family. Maybe whatever they were. I want you to think about if you have brothers and sisters. I don't have brothers and sisters. But forgive them to an equal standard as you. Forgive them as much as you can forgive yourself. It's a little bit easier to forgive ourselves sometimes. And I'm someone who's really, really hard on myself really tough on myself and I find it harder to forgive myself than to forgive others but if we can forgive people in the same way that God has forgiven us 
we can really start to understand God doesn't bring up your past shame. He doesn't bring up the sins that you did or all the pains that you've caused when you come to him. And we shouldn't do that to others. And that's kind of what Paul's saying. You know, you know, don't worry about the fact that he was your former slave. Don't worry about the pain that he's caused you. Forgive him in the same way you would forgive family or a brother or a sister. Yeah, they may they they can hurt you. They can they can they can be a pain. They can do all these things. But at the end of the day, most times you're going to forgive them. And that's going to go right back to normal. And that's kind of what we need to do here. Um, and if you can't do that, if you're really struggling with it, when you're thinking of your example that I've asked you to think about, I'm going to read another verse. And everyone keep thinking about their person or whoever it is or whatever it is. It could be a thing too. Whatever has caused you pain. Um... In verse 17, it says, um, sorry, sorry, not verse 17. Verse 18, but if he has wronged you, if this person has wronged you or owes you anything, literally anything, any pain they've caused you, anything they've stolen from you, if you're jealous towards them, whatever it is, Whatever has come about you, whatever has caused you to resent that person or build up the grudge or build up your anchor that's keeping you from going deeper, whatever it is, he says to put that on my account, to put it on my tab, put it, put everything that is owed towards them on me. And if you're struggling with this, I want to give you a challenge. I want to really give all of us a challenge. If you struggle with forgiveness or you struggle with anything that's going on, put it on Jesus. Paul writes this about, he put everything that he owes you on me, on Paul. But Jesus, this, this verse stuck out to me really clearly when I read it again today. Jesus does the same thing for us. That was the whole point of going to the cross. That was the whole point of salvation. That's the whole point of grace. That's the whole point of mercy. That's the whole point of everything it means to be Christian. Is to receive the great salvation and the great blessings of God from Him. And that He takes everything bad. Everything you've done. Everything in your past. And He cleans us and He washes us. He gives us, he gives us that living water to keep us clean and to cleanse us from this. As we talked about in part one. But He does that. And he takes everything else on his account. That, he took all of our sins and put them on the cross and conquered death and, f and freed himself from the grave because that's what we needed. He took all of that on his account. So th whatever that person's done, whether they're a Christian or not, whether they're saved or not, I don't care if they know God or they are the furthest thing from God from being a Christian or from being whatever they need, wh whatever it, it means to be Christian, whatever they are still put it on God still put those things on God still give it to God still give the forgiveness to God and God can work everything else out they don't have to be a blessing to you they don't have to be a blessing to you your family or anyone you know they can be blessings to complete strangers that you may never know about but whatever it is put it on God's account and see maybe if you can start to learn how to forgive them See maybe if you can understand what the forgiveness is and put that same forgiveness that you received onto them. Um, and I hope that when you do that, the anchor that we talked about on the shore that's keeping you in the shallows, that's keeping you in that shallow water, that's keeping you from getting closer to God or pushing towards the source of the water, which is Jesus, pushing us, pushing us, uh, that, that it's keeping you from where, wherever, from wherever you want to be at with God, from wherever place you want to be at with God, or just anything that you want with God, that you'll you'll learn that we can just cut it. The only thing holding our anger to us is us. We're the only thing that can prevent us from getting to God. We're the only thing that can keep us away from God. God reaches out. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. He never quits on us. But we can quit on God. We can quit on ourselves. We can quit believing. We can quit on anything that we set our minds to. And guess what? 
it will change everything. It can stop us in our tracks. It can stop us from going for uh, going deeper. Um, and that's really all I got for tonight. Uh, I really hope everybody enjoyed it. Um, it's a it's a if it hasn't been like the last two lessons. I I don't feel like I got too heated up, but um, I hope everyone enjoyed it. I hope everyone is really enjoying the series. Next week we're going to be talking about stagnation, and we're going to be talking about being stuck, and that this kind of talks about that as well. Um, but I, I want to talk about still being stuck, and we're we're going to get to it, and we're gonna we're going to learn how to how to keep going deeper and how to get closer to God. I want to stop real quick. I can't. Um, we're not done yet. We're talking about the point of this lesson is an ocean, and to try and imagine this water as an ocean. And if we don't understand what it means to go deeper, we won't get it. That song that I actually picked is a perfect example. Because we can keep going deeper. We can keep getting closer to God. But guess what? It's not easy. It is not easy to get closer. It's going to hurt. And it's going to suck sometimes. And if you have a problem with that, I'm sorry. Stay on the shallow end. But I want to get deeper. I want to get a little closer to God. Because guess what? I want his waves to crush over me. I want him to sink me down a little bit. And sit me down and tell me where I've fallen short. Because I can remember the first day. But guess what? When we get here where we're at now, the first day is what we need to remember. We need to be brought back to the love that brought us in to understand the love that we need to give out. And if you can't forgive somebody, if I can't forgive somebody, we're falling short. Ask God to remind you of it, to bring you closer to him, to remind you of that first day, the first time he calls your name, the first time he opened your eyes, the first time he brought you from the blind to the seeing, the first time he showed you his grace. And if we can't understand that, we're not going to get anywhere in this series. If you can't understand that, you're not going to grow. Stay on the shallow end. But if you want to go deeper, we got to get a little closer. we got to get a little bit further in on our understanding understanding and we have to understand that it's not easy to forgive people it sucks it really does I'm sorry if you're watching this dad I'm gonna talk about you for a minute for y'all who don't know my parents got divorced when I was a kid and it hurt I spent every weekend at my dad's from the time I was probably three or four until I was about 14 and when around the time I was 14 um, I stopped going to my dad's on the weekends because there was one night that my dad was drinking and driving and I was uh, my stepmom or I don't even know if they were married at that time but uh, she 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 took me and she brought me back to my mom's and I remember how much that day sucked man it really sucked I remember crying in the living room because my mom and my stepdad weren't home yet. And I got in the house and I just had to sit there trying to come to terms of what just happened in my life. Because my dad to me was a hero. And he still kind of is. I got to be honest when I say that. He still, he still kind of is. He's still someone that I inspire to be in certain aspects of his life. Because he's the, he's the kind of guy who doesn't meet a stranger. He might be a little odd, but he's never going to meet somebody that he's not going to be friends with by the time you get done talking. He's just a great influencer. He's just a great person that encourages people. And it's just crazy to me. Because I'm, the, I'm, I'm, I'm not like that at all. I, I really struggle communicating with people and, and, and seeing people in public. But he's great at it. But I remember sitting there and this man that I knew was my hero and I knew he had a drinking problem. Trust me, I knew. I, I prayed about it and I, I, I still do pray about it sometimes. And we're still not all the way back yet. And I, I can't say that I've all fully forgiven yet. It's It sucks, man, it really sucks. And maybe some people have the same story, maybe they don't, maybe you have a different story, but whatever it is, it sucks and I get it. I think we can all understand in some type of way when we have something that has hurt us and it sucks. But I, I remember this one time 
And if you've been in my church, I'm sorry. You're going to hear the same story because I have to acknowledge every good thing God has done for me in my life so my faith can be built up. And I feel like if I don't share it, then how am I supposed to encourage people? How am I supposed to help people? And how am I supposed to encourage you guys listening if I don't be honest with it? So I remember my dad, um, it was some type of football game. I think it was... It was a spring game. It wasn't even a real football game, but he couldn't make it. And I remember, I, I couldn't see him in the stands, but I would always look for him. And like I said, Dad, if you're watching this, I'm sorry, but I have to be honest, and I hope you I hope you accept that. And if it hurts you a little bit, I'm sorry. Call me afterwards. We'll talk about it. But um, I, I, I remember I couldn't really see him in the stands, um, and sometimes I would look, but I didn't really see him. And I went back to my car, and I picked up my phone out of my car because I used to lock it in there because uh, I didn't trust the football players. And uh, um, I put I, I got my phone out and I saw there was a voicemail on there. And it's from my dad. It was basically like, you know, something came up and then something has been, you know, he had, he had stepdaughters and stuff. And it, something came up with one of them, I believe. And he couldn't make it to my game because of that. Um, he didn't have the car, so he couldn't, he couldn't make it to it. And, um, I don't know why, but that time stung more than any other time. It really hurt. <laughs> and there's other things that's hurt before. And I'm not someone who cries a lot. Uh, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Um, but I remember it hurting. And I remember I turned on my car and I turned on the radio and there was Caleb. And there was David Crowder band. How He Loves came on the radio. And I know it sounds cliche. It's one of those stories where some the right song came on the right on the radio at like the right time. But whatever, you're going to hear it, okay? And so it was How He Loves. And the first line of that song, if, if no one's heard it before, the first line of the song is, He is jealous for me. And man, that hit like a ton of bricks. It really hit. <laughs> I remember breaking down in my car because knowing that God is jealous for me when I don't feel like I can be worthy of anybody is, is just amazing. And I had been a Christian my entire life, it felt like. But it was at that moment that I really understood what God's love was. That I really understood that when you don't feel like you're wanted or when you hate or when you hate yourself or when you feel like you're being brought down, that God still chases after you. When you feel like no one else wants you, God still wants you. In fact, he wants you so much that he's jealous of anyone else who has time, who has your time and has your focus. And I couldn't understand the love like that until I was broken like that. I couldn't be put back together until I was torn apart. And in the same way, Philemon had to be torn apart. He had to be broken down so he could get a little deeper. And it doesn't mean that it's always going to be a blessing to us right afterwards. I still don't know if the blessing's fully going to come my way. If my dad totally changed right now, and I think he's on his way. I think there's things in his life that it's coming, it's coming through. And I'm being patient for it. But if it never blesses me, I hope it blesses somebody else, right? It doesn't have to be my turn to receive a blessing. And it's okay to be a little bit jealous when other people get what you feel like you deserve. It's okay to feel like that. But guess what? If it's not your turn, God needs to give that blessing to someone else more, okay? It's, it's the same thing as your food. It's the same thing as your water. We have tons of it. But there's other people who need it more than we do. And God uses it in the same way. The blessing you think you deserve may not be yours. It may just be what someone else needs more than you. And I, I just felt like I couldn't stop before we went into that a little bit. Because we got to get forgiveness. We got to understand forgiveness. You have to understand how to forgive if you want to get closer to God. If you really want to soak into this series and you really want to get into his water and you really want him to pour into your life, you have to realize that you have to forgive the people you don't want to forgive. And you have to let go of all the sins that kept you back. You have to let go of your addictions. Everything the Bible says it's against, you have to let it go if you want to get closer to God. You can't hold on to being jealous of someone else for what they have if you want to get closer to God. You're not going to ever reach contentment if you're still focusing on what someone else 
else has. You're never going to really understand the blessing God gives you every day to encourage your faith if you keep looking at what someone else has, okay? They can have all the great blessings. You're going to focus on the big things. You're going to focus on a nice car and a nice house and a nice family, all that other crap. Who cares? If God woke you up this morning, you have a little blessing, and that's what you need. That's all you need for the day. Be content with it. If he gave you food in your belly, guess what? Be content with it. Whatever the little thing you have today, be content with it. Because guess what? That's what God given. That's what God has given you, and that's what we're supposed to be happy with. It may not be great in our eyes, but it's great in His eyes. Because no matter what we say about God, no matter what hurt we've been through, maybe you have to forgive God. Maybe God hurt you. But guess what? He never leaves and He never forsakes us, and He is always jealous for us. He always wants our intention. He always wants us, man. And He always wants us to love Him back the same way He loves us. And it's hard to do that sometimes when you look at other people being blessed when you feel like you really need it. It's hard to do that, but we have to do it. We have to do it if you want to get closer to God. You have to understand the little things that he gives you every day. Maybe, it's, maybe you feel like you're being rationed in your blessings. Maybe you have to take a few and take what you get because that's all you got. But guess what? There's still something greater sitting on the other side. Like I said before, if you're in the bad times right now, if you're, in the, if you're struggling right now, guess what? There's still good coming out of it because all things work together for good. Coronavirus works together for good. I don't know how. The loved ones you lost work together for your good. They all work together for good. And I don't know how it works together. I can't tell you when it's going to work together. I can't tell you why it's going to happen that way. But I can tell you that something good is coming out of it. And that's, I think that's it. I think, it's, I think I'm good now.